Hey everybody, uh, as you may have noticed, this channel is called Blades and Bullets, and looking over my video library, I realized I only have one Bullets-related video, so I thought it might be interesting and fun for me, if no one else, uh, to make it mix it up a little bit and talk about my latest firearms acquisition, which is the Steyr M9A2MF, which I will refer to as the Steyr M9 from now on. The Steyr M9 is the so-called medium, or 4-inch barreled version, of Steyr's A2MF series. Uh, also in the series are the C9, which is the compact 3.8-inch barrel, and the L9, which is the 4. 5 inch barrel version. Now in the interest of full disclosure, uh, this is a polymer frame striker fired 9mm semi-auto. And yes, I realize that that's kind of boring. Everyone and their mom makes one. Everyone and their mom probably already has at least one, including myself. So why did I end up with one of these, even if I already have multiple polymer frame striker fired 9mm handguns? Uh, two reasons, re really. And it mostly has to do with how they culminate into the overall appearance of the gun, which I find to be pretty striking and pretty cool, and that's this uh, high grip and the trapezoidal sights. Uh, from a comfort perspective, the M9 has an aggressively textured and stippled grip, but it's not so aggressive that the gun is uncomfortable to hold. It's not like holding sandpaper and it's not going to uh, rub a hole in your skin by holding. That grippy texture is something that I suspect most people will find pretty appealing. Now, the feature that's being pushed in ad copy for the A2 MF line is this MF part, uh, the modular frame. Unlike with something like the SIG 320, where the entire frame is changed out, the A2 MF line has these interchangeable rear and side panels. The rear back straps has three sizes, small, medium, and large, and then there are side panels that are offered in a smooth or swelled variety that go on either side of the grip. Uh, I have the smooth side panels on mine and the medium back strap. They are pretty easy to change out, uh, not toolless. You'll need a punch to remove the pin on the back strap, and then the panels all just slide out through the bottom around the magwell. There are accessory rails under the barrel on all models, and a trigger safety with no manual safety offered. Uh, the magazine release seems to be non ambi I couldn't find any mention of it being swappable, so I have to assume it isn't ambidextrous. Uh, the mag release, though, is very long, and it doesn't require much in the way of forward leverage to get the mag to drop out, so it should be fairly accommodating to different hand sizes. It's comfortable for me to hit consistently, at the very least. Magazines don't seem to be compatible between the A1 and A2 generation. Uh, at the very least, Steyr's website says that A2 mags will not work in the A1 generation. I'm not sure about vice versa, so if you already have an A1, you may need to get new mags for the A2. I believe the mag sizes available are 10 and 17 rounds. I haven't seen any in-between sizes or any sizes larger, and I'm not aware of any cross-brand compatibility uh, with these mags being around $40 each. Uh, if you are aware of any other brand of mags that work, please uh, post them in the comments. Uh, it does have a flared magwell, which I like, um, and with that long mag release button, it makes for a, a pretty quick magazine change and uh, pretty efficient. There are front and back serrations on the slide, so it's easy to find purchase pretty well anywhere on the slide uh, to be able to retract that slide. Uh, I find I prefer a slightly longer slide release for better leverage, uh, but I know some people have issues with accidentally hitting slide releases on some guns if they have larger hands. Uh, this one is a touch on the snug side uh, whenever attempting to, to depress, but it has a fairly wide shelf, it's easy to grip in texture, and uh, I don't seem like I have any problems uh, finding it, and it doesn't really seem like it'd be much of a snag liability. As I mentioned earlier, one of the big selling points is the trap front and rear sights. As far as I can tell, uh, the manual doesn't mention it anywhere. The sights are intended to be lined up like so. Out of the box, my gun with both types of ammo that I tested hit about an inch to the left. Uh, I, so I ended up just using a brass punch and a hammer to drift that front sight to the left. It only took two solid whacks to drift it, and that puts the, put the sights pretty much dead on. Uh, the rear sights are also driftable for windage, but neither are adjustable for elevation. 
in my experience and with the ammo I was shooting at, uh, which was about 10 or 11 yards using a mix of brass and steel case ammunition, uh, I was needing to put the top of the pyramid of the front sight just below the top of the target in order to hit very close to center. Uh, whether that was clay targets or one inch squares on my paper targets, uh, the gun seemed more mechanically accurate than me, which is all I can really ask for. Accuracy did tighten up a bit with the half dozen uh, Hornady hollow points that I shot through it, and I was shooting 115 grain across all different types of ammunition and uh, I was shooting the the bullseyes out on those uh, those one inch targets with hollow points pretty consistently. Now I can see how the narrow point of those front trapezoid sights uh, could aid in pinpoint shooting but I did find that I was losing those rear sights occasionally to the point that my front sight would tend to drift while I was slow firing. Uh, I believe this is because those rear blades are pretty thin and so my eyes just kind of sometimes lost them and exactly where my front sight was in relation to them. I'm not sure if that would be an issue for everybody, if it's just my bad eyes, but the front sight did pick up very quickly. It was very clear and easy to get on target uh, quickly during rapid fire drills, so it seems like that kind of rapid fire or quick target shooting is where those sights will shine. Uh, what did not help with accuracy, however, was the trigger, and it's not a terrible trigger per se. My trigger scale weighted out at about five and a half pounds, which is still on the decent side of standard in my opinion uh, it just has a very creepy pull and it's not like it's some kind of simulated two stage because there was no consistent wall right, right, right before the break so it's not a bad trigger definitely not a bad defensive trigger in, in my opinion it's just not a very precise one now one of the other selling points and likely the most eye-catching one is this very high grip angle it looked to me like that grip angle would set the bore axis pretty low and help with recoil recovery and uh, also seem like it would point very naturally combined with those those sights and that is the advertise effect uh, in their words uh, comfort and recoil mitigation is what that high grip angle uh, provides uh, between that uh, the stippling and the customizable frame it does feel very comfortable in the hand and it does point very naturally uh, that said i didn't really feel like the recoil mitigation was extremely noticeable certainly not as much as the low bore axis on my rhino revolver with the sights and the high grip angle it was fast back on target but it didn't necessarily seem like it was a huge improvement over for example my g19x or my ppq uh, at least not for me it wasn't uh, extremely noticeable so i'm not sure that uh, i would consider that a game changer versus my other striker fired polymer framed nine millimeter handguns from a reliability standpoint i fired about three 350 rounds of 115 grain ammo. Um, almost all of that was FMJ, like I said, about a half dozen rounds of hollow points, uh, just because of the expense issue there. And uh, I use a mix of cheap brass and steel case, and I experienced no real malfunctions. At one point, I did have one casing that came back and hit me right in the forehead, which was immediately followed by a casing from the final round in the mag that stayed on top of the empty magazine uh, when the slide locked back that I just kind of tipped out of the gun and let fall. And I actually thought at that point I was about to start having some extractor issues. I thought the extractor was about to go out on me, but then I ended up firing another 150 rounds and the issue never repeated. So I suspect that was more of an issue with um, an underpowered steel case than it was anything else with the gun or maybe even some gunk got in the extractor between those two rounds and, and worked its way out. I'm not sure. I did also have the slide drop on a fresh magazine twice without hitting the release or pulling the slide back, but that's not really a significant malfunction, uh, just something I noticed and so I figured I would mention it here. Overall, I like this gun quite a bit. I really like the look of it and I really like the way that it feels. And I, handgun feel is a huge part, in my opinion, of handgun selection and that if a gun doesn't fit your hand quite right chances are you're never really going to fall in love with it at least uh, that's uh, the way that I feel about general handgun selection and it does seem very solidly made and well thought out that said I, d I feel like the two things that really drew me to it to begin with which is the grip angle and the sights don't necessarily translate to a revelatory shooting experience um, as compared to the other nine uh, millimeter striker fired polymer frame guns that I've got there are millions of them and uh, this is another one that's not a bad thing but you probably aren't going to ditch your existing kit in favor of it if you've already got one uh, that's working well for you uh, however if you're looking to get into one for the first 
time or you just like the way it looks and are interested in it my experience with it was uh, pretty positive I like it and I'll uh, I'm looking forward to shooting it some more so hope you all have a great day and great week and I will see you a little later on